Imagine a scenario where your Bluetooth-enabled pacemaker is held hostage by ransomware. Would you or your care provider even know how to pay it to possibly save your life? What about all these drones that are flying around these days? They're pretty cool. But did you know that almost none of them have any sort of security built in, meaning that hackers can take them over at any time and fly them into your car, into a plane, or into a stadium full of people? It's kind of freaky. What about smart cities? Incredible technologies running the cities that we live in. What if a sophisticated adversary like a nation state would take down the energy grid? Would hack into 911 or other emergency services? Would take down the traffic systems, create massive traffic jams? It's crazy, right? Imagine the chaos that would bring. Now, what if this adversary actually did all of that as part of a layered campaign? What would that do to the city that you live in? What if that layered campaign was actually just a distraction because they were planning a terrorist attack? In town later that day. This may sound like some sort of a science fiction story for the next Jason Bourne thriller, but in national security circles, in cybersecurity communities, these are the things that women and men are thinking about to keep us safe. Now, if you're like me, you're probably getting frustrated by all these stories of different cybersecurity breaches that are happening all the time. I get frustrated by it. But what frustrates me the most and is starting to kind of piss me off, to be honest. It's not the fact that these incidents are happening. It's the fact that it can be prevented. You see, policymakers and business leaders, and most importantly, technology manufacturers, the folks who are introducing all this tech and software into our society, they've been getting warned for years about the risks of introducing and building tech without addressing cybersecurity. But clearly, they're not doing a good job, are they? But what's even worse is that today, right now, we actually know what to do and have the solutions to fix all of this. And that's what we're going to talk about today. What do we need to do to address and fix all this technology, cybersecurity vulnerabilities that are out there? Who needs to do what? And the coolest part of the conversation, I think, is: Are you the best hope for cybersecurity? Because believe it or not, all of you in this room who are presumably not cyber experts have more power and more influence than you could possibly imagine. So let's start by talking about why is everything getting hacked all the time? When you guys know this. Technology is everywhere, right? It's in our homes, in our businesses, in our governments, and in our military. And that's a great thing, right? We have more efficiency than ever before. We're living longer, healthier, and I believe happier lives, despite what's in the media these days. And we're connected to our brothers and sisters around the world in ways never before imagined. That's fantastic. The problem is that almost everything is built with poor security. Well, what do we mean by that? Well, for the purpose of this talk, we don't have a lot of time. We're going to talk about it in two very simple silos. Let's talk about code. All this tech that's out there is run by computer chips, right? Computer chips run code. Code can either be written well or written poorly. Code that's written well essentially is stronger, and when hackers try to break in, they have a harder time doing so. It's more resilient. Now, code can be written poorly as well. Now, if code is written poorly, it's less resilient. And hackers can break in and do all sorts of bad stuff, like steal your data, manipulate data. They can hack into your webcam and watch you without you knowing it. It's a thing. Cover your webcam if you don't, or take down a power grid. Right? All sorts of nefarious activities. And unfortunately, a lot, of, a lot of the technology today is run and built with poor code, irresponsibly coded tech. And so, because of this, we have this huge multi-billion-dollar cybersecurity industry that's out there that has all sorts of great solutions. To protect our technology, and there's two ways to use this: software manufacturers and technology vendors. They can embed or bake this cybersecurity tech into all this stuff that we're using to make it stronger, or they can add it on after the fact. Think of it this way: We all love dessert, right? Who doesn't love dessert? Which one would you rather have? You want a cake where the chef puts sugar into the batter, right? Adds that sweetener in, or do you want to eat cake where they forgot sugar, which is the whole point? And、at the end is like, oh crap, and then sprinkle sugar on afterwards. Well, unless you're weird, you obviously want the cake with sugar. Same thing with technology. Technology is better and stronger when security is built in, and those engineers are using that security tech and know-how and knowledge to make it stronger. And unfortunately, like that irresponsible chef, a lot of these technologies are not built with security baked in. It's added on after the fact. And so we live in a world with irresponsibly coded tech. And technology added on after the fact, and that's why a lot of this 
hacks and incidents are happening. So that's the technical reasons, and now you guys are all tech experts, but I actually want us to look past that for a minute, because that's more of a um, result of the true root cause that I want to get into. So ask yourself this, right? Who's doing all of this programming? Who's writing all this code? It's, it's coders, it's programmers. Now, I'm not a programmer. I'm not smart enough to do that. When I think of what they do, I think of the Matrix and Neo and that thing coming out of his neck, right? But what I do know is this. These guys need a, an environment that allows them to build strong, secure technology. So who creates that environment? Who's making decisions that gives them the time to build secure technology? It's a person. It's their manager, right? Who decides how much budget they get to buy cybersecurity technology and train them to be better coders and better programmers? It's their boss, right? It's that company. It's the, the manager there. Who ultimately is deciding for that company to rush to push out cybersecurity or uh, software and technologies into our homes and into our lives, which may be vulnerable, which may introduce vulnerabilities into our world, and not prioritizing security. At the end of the day, who's been ignoring the warning signs from cybersecurity experts for years that's created this vulnerable world that we live in? I think you see where I'm going with this. Yes, we have to address all these technology risks that are out there right now because they're creating all these vulnerabilities and all the threats and breaches that we're seeing, but that's not the root cause. The cyber incidents are a symptom of the biggest threat that we face today, which is us, which is people. And ultimately, it's become acceptable today to put profits over security. That's the big problem that we're just not talking about. We keep talking about threat, 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 breach, breach, breach. But we've got to get to the root cause. And there's three things I want to talk about today. I call them kind of the three A's, right? First of all, we become apathetic to cybersecurity incidents. What happens when you hear about a breach in the news? Bup, 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 right? A lot of talk in the news. We get pissed off. We may have some hearings. And then what happens? Has anyone here actually stopped shopping at Target? I haven't. I go there and I swipe my credit card, and I'm in cyber. We don't do anything, you guys. We just keep doing the same thing. It's not okay. And as new technologies roll out the door, we don't have to wait for them to be breached. There is research being done. There's audits being done. That in my field, in cybersecurity, we see these things coming out, and we read them, and we know that these things are already vulnerable. We're not doing a good enough job. We're not heeding the warning signs. Because ultimately, what a lot of times is happening, unfortunately, is organizations will do an assessment. Companies do an assessment. They're there to make money. That's okay. They say, what's cheaper? What's better for business? To spend the time and the cost, which is very expensive and difficult, to create very secure products, or hmm, maybe I'll put out technologies that are not as secure. And if there's an incident that people do hear about, and most of the time you guys don't even hear about it, well, I'll pay some fines. Maybe I'll pay some lawsuit fees, I'll deal with some bad PR, and my shareholder value will go down temporarily, and that's it. Well, we know what they're doing. They're going the cheaper route. And the reason that's not okay is because today, and this is more than just about privacy and identity theft. Those are still important issues that we must deal with. But as you heard in the examples that I started our talk with earlier, the consequences are now becoming kinetic, right? This is having possibly physical impacts into our lives. Not to mention influence ops and all the things you're hearing about with our elections and all these things, right? We have to address this with a much greater sense of urgency than we have been. But this is not a doom and gloom talk. A positive guy, we're going to end on a high note, because we got this, okay? We have the tools, we have the technologies, we have the frameworks, we have the knowledge, we have the know-how. We know how to fix all this. We're just not making it a priority. That's why I said I'm frustrated. It doesn't have to be this way. And we have tens of thousands of skilled cybersecurity practitioners who are in our government, in our military, in our academia, in all these companies who are trying to make this a priority. And so I'm not saying this is easy. It's very difficult. We have to deal with fixing our, and, and securing our global supply chains. It's not an easy thing to do. We have to deal with changing cultures. It's not an easy thing to do. We have to figure out how to incentivize companies to do the right thing. It's not easy to do. But we're the United States of America. We're the ones who step up historically and solve the greatest challenges to face modern society. If anyone should do this, it should be us. And we are doing a good job. We're leading, but we've got to do more, along with our allies. And the number one excuse that organizations and governments use is that it's too expensive, it's resource prohibitive. That's BS. 
Oops, that's BS. We contribute a quarter to the world's GDP and our government and global corporations, not just the US, they have resources. This is just about prioritizing the resources that we have. The legislative community needs to responsibly legislate and mandate these things. Responsibly, responsibly is the key. I don't want, we don't want to over-regulate, but you do need regulations like we have in other industries. Corporations need to develop a better sense of ethics, right? Around security and privacy and not be shady about their terms and conditions. Let nobody reads because they're 30 pages. Who has time? We need to educate at a very young age, just like we do around seatbelt safety and anti-smoking and bullying, right? This is a value that kids need to learn about. And the coolest part is all of you guys, all you beautiful people out there. I see you. I love you. Because you guys are the biggest asset that we're not even using, right? You guys are the secret weapon. Because my industry, the cybersecurity and national security community, we're trying to do our thing. We're doing a good job, I think. But we're like one one millionth of the world, right, of the population. How many people can we actually talk to? You guys are everybody else. Imagine what would happen if you and all of your spheres of influence said cybersecurity matters to me, and I'm just maybe not going to buy your stuff if it's not secure enough, or I'm not going to work with you if you're not secure enough to my standards. And you don't have to be an executive to make a difference. What can you do? Well, first of all, speak up with your money. Money talks, you know that. Whether you're a consumer buying for your home or for your small, medium, or large business, if you let people know that you're going to spend your money elsewhere with products that are more secure, they will talk. That message will trickle up, and they will start to realize that they're incentivized now, remember that word? To make their products more secure. Next, talk about security. When you're at your doctor's office next time, ask about medical device security. When you're hooked up to that machine, say, is there malware on that machine? How do, they, how do you know that? You look like a bad, sorry, they told me not to swear, but you know what you look like. They never ask these questions. More importantly, the message will trickle up. You'll, you'll enact change, right? Put security over fun. You know those apps you download that make you look like a cute panda and you, you, you know, text it around? It's fun, but that terms and conditions that you didn't read because it's too long anyway, it's probably giving away all your data. It's reading your emails and your texts and your, your search history maybe even accessing your microphone or your camera. It's not worth it. And it's possibly a national security concern of ours. We don't have time to get into it, but it is. And finally, talk to the legislative, your legislators. You know, let them know that you want them to hold technology providers accountable. And so, in closing, are you our best hope for cybersecurity? Hell yeah, you are. We need your help. We cannot do this alone. So walk away, hopefully, with three things today. This Everything hackable world that we live in, it's our own making. The good news is that we can prevent all of it. We know what to do. We just got to make it a priority. And three, the coolest thing is that you guys can be a part of the solution. You are the solution that we need. So speak up with your wallets and with your voices. Thank you.